Thank you, Shuchetara. I'm deeply grateful for this opportunity. When Shuchetara first contacted me for this event, her specific request was that this should be a scientific talk and not usual reminiscence. Because so and and that I particularly like, and that's why I'm deeply grateful, of course. And so I shall uh, because I have a long association with SSG in various forms from my from during my undergraduate years onwards, both in inside the class and outside, because I was fortunate to had a close connection. In fact, I stayed to enter my schooling days in a place where SSG also lived and subsequently had close connection with that. It was often all my holidays were spent there. So I had plenty of opportunity for interacting with SSG beyond the classroom. So that was a wonderful opportunity. But all those I'm not going to share in this talk. In this talk, I was also his undergraduate student here in residency as well as postgraduate at special paper solid state source study. But I will begin my talk from the phase I joined him as a PhD student and why I have planned this talk in this way. I think when, when Vishwarup listed his roles, his thing, he mentioned, I'm very glad because this is usually not mentioned, not known in, in India, of course, and even in Calcutta much, that he had a pioneering role to play in the research of foundations of quantum mechanics which was completely outside the mainstream of physics till 90s. Let's be frank about it. And only from 2001 to 10, it was it became respectable. And so I'm really the last decade the subject has picked up. So I'll give a flavor of that. So, I'll, so that's why my talk talk to put, to put the period of my research work with SSG in perspective. That is important to first appreciate is the significance of him guiding me on this topic and why it was motivated. That will be instructive for the students as well. So first of all, so is that, uh, as I would say, so in my talk, I'll begin by providing what I may call the background perspectives on this topic of research student, of, of this research, of my research study. So what was the situation then in 1980 when I began my research work with SLG? What was the international situation? Just to give you an idea and where the subject was evolved. And then I will just indicate some key aspects of my PhD works that will... Uh, slide, uh, no, not the slide, and then trying no, to use the point. Uh, point. point. And anyway, leave it, leave it. Usually, if lesser pointers, I find with this kind of arrangement yeah. does not work. Anyway, leave that. Yeah. Uh, don't, okay. don't worry. Okay. <laughs> so, some key aspects that I will only indicate some key aspects. The, 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 I will not go into the details, seeing the broad nature of the audience, but indicate what are the problems on which the works we did at that time are, have contemporary significance. And I'll only choose those directions. And among those directions, there is a particular direction which is now highly topical. There is also other direction which I'll mention in this slide, but I'm not going into the details. But this particular direction, 
I will elaborate a bit. That is the study of the macroscopic limit of massive objects, studying their quantum behavior. Why it is important and how the, my studies in recent years have been motivated by the SSG. The, the other direction, which also I will indicate how, because I have much, incidentally, this area is now one of the hottest areas in physics, because the very unique feature of this research enterprise linking, starting from philosophical questions to conceptual questions to experimental studies to cutting edge technological applications. So that's why, but in 1980, it was unimaginable, unimaginable not that, to be very frank with you. Uh, I was a bit apologetic when I used to mention to all my colleagues that I was doing foundations, all philosophical mambo jump. So only I think, but anyway, this is how science progresses. So. Actually, oh, it's like. Yeah, let me put it. Yeah. The atmos lighting. so, so let me provide what I call a snapshot of these early developments. What are the key landmark developments? Now, of course, it is, as usually many of you may be aware, this whole line of study originated from this famous Einstein, Podolsky, Rose, and Arduin. But this was an this was entirely a philosophical argument. So I shall not mention anything more on that. But what my emphasis of the talk will be on on discussing and then also how actually these studies have got linked with actual experiments. So in that context, right, but from the point of view of the basis of this line of studies, this Schrodinger's analysis was extremely important because he put the Einstein-Podolsky argument in a more concrete way. And it was in his analysis that the concept of entanglement was first well defined. And it was Schrodinger who first realized very much the importance of entanglement. And also he talked about quantum non-locality and importantly, quantum measurement problems. So these two are very seminal papers in 35, 36. But at that time, it was ignored by the mainstream physics area. So it was historically, so that paper remained ignored unless, until David Bohm, while writing his book on quantum mechanics, which is incidentally a very, very, very valuable book, it touches upon many basic aspects of quantum mechanics, not usually covered in usual textbooks. It's a David Bohm's. And that book had last, last chapter where he, he, he reformulated the EPR argument in a testable form. In terms of the now the example we all discussed, the spin example, whenever I say that was first formulated in Bohm's book. And there he also showed why there are, there are some other important aspects of that book. I'm not of that discussion, but I'm not going into that. Incidentally, I had the opportunity of working with David Bohm after completing my PhD work with SSG. And during that time, when I first went to UK, I was fortunate to get the opportunity because he liked one of our works that I will mention. But at that time, David Bohm told that he had sent this book to many people, like Pauli Bohr and other things. Einstein liked that book and invited him for discussion. And it was Bohm's discussion with Einstein led to the formulation of his famous hidden variable model, which whose publication in 1952 inspired John Bell. John Bell read Bohm's paper 
and Watkins. So anyway, there are many more historical vignettes. I'm not going into that, but it is, and also it is very interesting. David Bohm was a did his PhD with Oppenheimer, and Oppenheimer, when he sent the back book, he was a standard quantum mechanics person. So he said, except your last chapter, every chapter is very, very well done. The last chapter. So anyway, but later on, I will come to Oppenheimer's reaction and the last reaction just before he died. He died in seven. So anyway, so Bohm's testable. So really inspired by David Bohm's work, John Bell came up with this theorem, which was in 1964, as I have mentioned. And But that was very difficult for David Bohm to publish in a respectable journal, although Bohm by then was an established particle physicist working in CERN. So he chose to publish it in a journal called Physics, which became obsolete, which has ceased to exist just one year after its coming into being. That was a new journal then. And its inaugural issue had Bohm's paper. And Bohm used to uh, Bell, and Bell used to joke that because of my paper, that journal expired. People thought that such a thing. So that, that was a paper, but then Bell followed up with a review paper and all those I'm not going into. But what is important, that only very few persons at that time paid attention to what Bell's theorem meant or what it was all about. But fortunately, a graduate student in University of California, Berkeley, called John Clauser. He, in 1974, took up the challenge of experimentally doing. He somehow was inspired by it. He also, there, there is a long story how he came across Bell's paper, because at that time, to come across a paper which exists in a journal that has ceased to exist within an hour, within a year. But all, all those I'm not going into. Now they are part of history thanks to this Nobel lecture and Nobel awards and all this. But what I'm the point interesting is, John Clauser did that experiment, that experiment had some caveats. And John Clauser, although did got his PhD, mm -hmm. didn't get any job. And out of frustration, he left physics and he founded a corporation. So when he got even this Nobel prize, he was not affiliated to any meetings, John Clauser. But anyway, so then, so that was the situation. That is in 1974. And then another curious event happened that was Alan Haskell. He, he had he had come here after his post-graduation at Ecole Normale in Paris. He, he's a very socially, uh, I try to call we have to choose politically correct term here. So he was a socially progressive and very socially committed person. So he went to Cameroon to do some social work with a private organization, Institute of Teaching. There, he, he somehow, I'm not going into that story also, but he came across John Bell's paper, someone, because Shimani was there, and Shimani was one of the few persons who So um, there is a story, but somehow he came. And then he somehow grasped its importance. He immediately came back and then, he joined as a PhD in 1980. So that was the situation then. So then I cut back to 1979. 70, 79, I happened to go, it was my final postgraduate year. And I went to go to TIFR for my summer project because I was a national science challenge. Hello, we got this summer project. Hello. So I went to and so this was the situation and aspects were started in 80 and his papers were published his experiments in 81, 82. But 1979, the summer, the summer of 1979, I went to Tata Institute of Fundamental Research to do summer project work on MIC. And there I remember Ramna Koshik was allotting the students to various projects. And by that time, having interacted with SSD outside the classroom much, I got interested in the basic aspects of quantum mechanics, trying to study what Schrodinger's papers, 35, 36. Although now I would not suggest any student to read, try to read those papers. So as SSD himself says, it's always science transcends the original papers. But at that time, there were no other papers. Either. So those two papers and David Bohm's book, that last chapter. 
So then I, I told Ramnath Koshik that I was in, what he was asking that what you are passionately interested in. Mm -hmm. That was a good question. Yes. And I later on I told him, I'm glad you asked that question. He emphasized the word passion. Passion is what mattered. So then I could venture and he was a very really loving person. That's the way he, at least my interactions with him. So he said that, okay. Oh, then he says, Pasha, Virendra was telling you are studying some paper, Virendra, which is very exciting on this fundamental, but I didn't find it in it. But it was credit of Ramnath Roshi, he said, and because of Virendra Singh's name, he, then so many you do project with him. And then Shashankara was working, and they put me in studying Bell's paper. Yes, sir, sir. So after studying Bell's paper, I came back and shared my experience with SSG and Fortune. That time after a postgraduate exam, I think took place and just forgot those details. But then I studied and then it and SSG is very much excited. And that was the trait of SSG. Whenever anything interesting new, it genuinely excited him. He he said, I remember studied it very closely and immediately said, This is something really, very deep and Something and started. I, I personally, when I did the summer project, could not understand many aspects. But then discussions with Sarvanpada and Virendra Singh helped anyway. But I came back. So all these then led to the fact that it seems SSP, the way he was excited, that this was the new thing coming. And at that time, at the decade of 70s, the romanticism of 70s, I think the whole atmosphere was like that and so at that time so somehow i also jumped into not that i was very conscious but somehow it also excited me at that point. so we started our research work in 80 at that time we did not know aspect was doing experiment and so on and then then 81 82 suddenly this after this those papers appear appear in papers and so now now i share not elaborate further. Here, just to remark that, but then we were studying closely the papers by Seth Browser and Aspect, and I was doing my PhD during. So that time, he had that, that, that I want to emphasize. He's always stressed what may be called the connection with experiments and the link between theory and experiments in a critical way. Personally, during my undergraduate postgraduate, I was horrible in experiments and didn't have any interest which my fellow students will certify. So experiment, the importance of experiment and that it is not enough just to do experiment, but to understand the experiment. Data analysis, he tried to teach me, but at that, but I frankly convinced I was not really <laughs> understood it properly. But what I understood from his the training to interpret the experiment to do it. So aspect and close our experimental papers, he examined closely, taught me, and then through discussions, we came to realize these experiments have certain shortcomings. Why I'm saying just realizing those experiments have shortcomings has been vindicated by this, even the no I I'll cite that the Nobel announcements and the why they got this Nobel Prize, why that? There's a long story to that. That is very instructive, the theory interplay between few. So that these experiments have loopholes. That is now the common term is for this, these loopholes were not realized by many at that time. And there was and there was this this is some this is in some couple of papers that we are then pointing out loopholes of these experiments. Because very few people considered them to be important. And then finding the loopholes of these experiments seemed to be a tall order. So anyway, so but we examined it and we have convinced that it was an important education for me at that stage. And then what happened, I'm just going to show. Ultimately, other people got convinced by the beginning of 90s about this importance of this line of study. And Zylinger initiated a series of experiments to come up with loophole free demonstration of this. But even 98, it was not complete. So, and only, and then series of experiments of different type of loopholes, it's a rich literature. In 2015, back-to-back -back papers in physical review, I think nature, nature physics, nature, which really convincingly established 
the violation. And that is why Nobel lecture was given here. It's the 2022, the Nobel award was given and these people all got Nobel Prize. But anyway, let me come. So, as I said, so in this, but, but you know, before indicating what are the three important directions that emerged from my research studies, uh, when did I start? Probably 215, 215, 215, 216, good, good, good. So, so the, the, these are the three important directions in which we work. I'll just say a few words about them. Before that, let me just continue the story. So 85, 84, that after the Allen aspect experiment, then in 1985, that will be linked to the main content of my talk today. That was that, uh, 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 Anthony Leggett, who is a very well-known party, condensed matter physicist, who ultimately won the Nobel Prize in 2000. In 1985, he, he, he was one of the earliest physicists to realize the importance of Bell's. And he came up with the temporal version of Bell inequality. And he posed, like, Bell inequality was concerned with the question of entanglement, its significance, the way it shows quantum non locality. Leggett came up with, with a parallel line of studies. He stimulated this parallel line of studies by posing the question. Of what may be called by formulating Schrodinger cat's laboratory cousin. The Schrodinger cat paradox, which was formulated by Schrodinger in 1935, like John Bell's work paved the way for the EPR argument to be testable, Leggett posed the question how cat paradox can be experimentally tested. So that was so what is the importance of this line of study? That I will come in some detail. But to put things in historical perspective, it is interesting that after 85, things started really picking up because there were different models of Bell's theorem. And then this one related to this quantum measurement problem is the idea of wave function collapse. And some important developments, quantum measurement problem was thought to be again an abstract problem. I will mention briefly about that, yes. But then the models of wave function collapse were proposed in 86 which could be in principle tested. And in fact, now just last year, the first experiment of that kind has been performed. So this has now become a very interesting line of study. And then a seminal paper, and that really heralded what the quantum foundation, the quantum uh, Nobel Foundation is called the second quantum revolution, is the quantum cryptographic scheme formulated in 1991 by Arthur Eckert, whose title was How Bell's Theorem Can Be Used to Ensure Security in Quantum Cryptography. So you see, by 1991, it was, it was not only a philosophical problem anymore, not, not only experimentally viable, but it then came up with a technological possibility. For secure cryptography, you needed to show violation of Bell's. So, and then uh, this demonstration, the formulation and demonstration of what is called teleportation, the power of quantum entanglement that was demonstrated, that you can transfer the state of a particle to a distant particle using entanglement without physically sending the particle. So, Bell, you, it, in, so these then heralded what may be called the second quantum revolution as you know, described by the Nobel Award announcement and quantum information and new age quantum technology came into being. Now, I come back to the research works I did at that time with SFT. So when uh, I was, we were studying entanglement and Bell's theorem, but, but, uh, by the way, since I had mentioned about Nobel, Thing, what is interesting when the Nobel Prize was awarded, it is interesting to note the announcement had this phase for experiments with entangled photons. So, the concept of entanglement which was established, establishing the violation of Bell inequalities and binary. So, it is very remarkable and unique that violation of Bell inequality it may seem like a very abstract thing to be put there. For that, the Nobel Prize. So, what is so great? So, 
the, although my talk is not concerned with bail inequality or all this, I shall just make one remark that bail inequality is based on assumptions made at an individual level. We know all know quantum mechanics is a statistical theory, so we can only talk about it, the famous boat dictum. You can only talk about things in a probabilistic. And all our notions should be in a statistical form. This is the famous statistical inter. So whatever assumption you make for individual run of the experiment for individual system does not make sense. That is what both say, there is no quantum world, or as Heisenberg said, you are not entitled to talk about individual events, like in a double split experiment, what, what an individual particle does. You are not entitled to talk about it. It is all statistical. Oh. Now, what John Bell did, that, and it is also part of the standard interpretation of quantum mechanics that to be consistent with superposition principles statistically very verified, you cannot assume that a particle has a definite property prior to measurement. It is only possible for a mixed state, but for a superposed state, this interpretation is. But precisely the EPR argument and all those questions that if this assumption we make it for an individual part, all these arguments were built up based on that assumption. So what John Bell posed that is this assumption testable? So that from the point of view of methodology of science from, is a remarkable question to pose and to come up with a method of deriving an inequality, which is at the statistical level, but it is derived from assumptions at an individual level, how nature works at individual level, where it is, where you, you are entitled to ascribe properties to the particles before measurement, and whether you assume locality or not at the individual level, no action at a distance. These are all happening at the individual level, determined by either by some variable not described by quantum mechanics or other. So it may seem like very philosophically abstract notion, but then the possibility of deriving a testable inequality which involves uh, all the probability of, of results of measurements on spatially separated particle white loop. One can show its violation. It, that means that those assumptions are not valid. So you can refute the concept of realism along with locality by experiments at a statistical level. So that's, that was an, in, it, it so turned out that inequality all, also has all these practical applications, but this was, it, it came out and it has turned out to be increasingly very powerful. Mm -hmm. But that's why I let it picked up on that methodology and what Bell did for two spatially separated entangled particles, Leggett did it for a single system involved. They get posed the question that can we test this realism assumption even for a single system? Because we barely considered spatially separated. So because of Bell's theorem, the concept of entanglement acquired a new meaning. And what quantum non-locality is what the violation of Bell inequality implies. Because what is not. So to put it simply so the correlations, the quantum correlations violating Bell inequality cannot be explained by correlations originating from the source or by correlations which are established by normal communication between the two parties spatially separated. So in other words, it is like after the, the example that is given that as if two singers are singing random series of notes, in, but, but only you hear them together you find some harmony between their singing, which cannot be explained by their local view. This is the crucial. So that's why the correlation, because otherwise correlations exist. Like there are also classical correlated systems like the, if you take a bomb, it explodes and the two fragments come on. Momentum conservation, correlation. So a common mistake done in presenting EPR, discussing quantum entanglement is that you have a spin entangle, you measure spin up, you predict spin down. That is not surprising. You take a Maxwell, a student will say, what's what? Why so fast? But all in maximum introduction say this. This is not the point. The point is that the correlations classically exist, but quantum correlations can be stronger in the sense that they cannot be explained because all classical correlations can be explained by correlations originating from the source. 
quantum correlations violating Berlin cannot be seen, and they cannot be also established by exchanging of normal signal because it, it can exist across space flight. So just, just, just to clarify because of the students. So that's why they use that. And then pioneering quantum information science has already indicated cryptography and so, so on. And that's what they mean. They use the single sentence to explain what entanglement is. I find that beautiful. Two particles behave like a single you. This is the sense which I just Okay. Then, so that is what I have said. So what we that the concept of entanglement that has been tested by all those experiments and the implication of their inequality, as I have already mentioned, is a correlated behavior between them, and the spatial separation can be such arbitrary amount can be arbitrarily separated, cannot be explained in terms of the local. Now, at that time, I, we were trying to study the detection loopholes of those experiments and studying what entanglement means. But then SSG came up with this. That was what to characterize SSG's real. What I find most remarkable about SSG, to say in a nutshell during my listening, is that we always try to pose, try to look at things in a completely different way and to pose questions which would be teasing questions. How best you can pose questions. That was how to continuously struggle to pose teasing questions. That is how we used to say. And also to look at things different. So you see, we were studying the interparticle entanglement. Then he came up with the question that can we have entanglement between two disjoint properties of a single particle? Because that was the question, because SSG had a strong base in Atomic spectral physics. In fact, he made me study condon and shortlist atomic structures. That is now, I think, no, all, all those details and all this. So, there, in the, to explain the spectral, because entanglement plays role in all those things. The entanglement means when the many particle wave function is not simply a product of them, but some of products. So that plays a key role in spectral explanations, like even helium atom spectrum, and only explained by the entanglement between. So many people ask, what is so special about it? So that's it as special, because if you consider spatially separated white spatial, or as Leggett now has put it you know, if you go to large mass. So now he asked the questions that if you consider the spin and the orbital angular momentum problem, of the particle. Already atomic spectra shows that they can have an entangled, an entangled state, the structure, the mathematical structure of an entangled state. So that's the, what physical implication that mathematical structure. Like entangled, the mathematical structure of the entangled state was well known in explaining ortho helium, ortho para helium by Heisenberg's work. That was the only, only paper in which the mathematical structure. So that's why one has to distinguish the entanglement, nothing special. One has to say, oh, it's there, quantum mechanics. But it's the mathematical structure. What physical implication has or took all these efforts, Schrodinger's inside, Bell's work, and all. So he posed a similar question of the intraparticle, which at that time no one had posed. And when we wrote the paper and, and we derived a single particle counterpart. Usually now, when Bell inequality is discussed, always two particles, basically Alice and Bob, to talk about Bell inequality. And this is now called intraparticle entanglement, the term we used in that. Now, at that time, when I did research the earlier studies and all these, it was really difficult to get China published. Physical review, they published aspects papers because it was experiment. But Kadit also comments criticizing those papers. That decade, and we were working on a loophole, you know, arguments about loopholes, but other papers were very difficult. So we used to publish and, uh, in lesser journal. So this paper, but fortunately, when we sent to physics letter, say, at that time, yeah, later I came to know one of the referees was John Bell himself. So 
he liked the paper, but when later I met him, John Bell died in 1990. He said, personally, I don't think, I don't think into what this kind of entanglement will have any use on it. He was not, but still, he liked the, the way of looking and, the, and formulation, but what implication it will further have was not clear. But essentially, he encouraged me to look at that. And this was the paper I'm really proud of, and particularly because of the later developments. Because for a long time, and that was how SSG had retired from here from a certain day, but still I had a long interactions with him, fortunate of the Kolani connection that I was fortunate. It was Kolani where he used to stay. So he used to continuously tease me with how to translate, because if you look at our, that paper was mathematically, as like it was formulated in the context of an atomic spectrum situation, coupling orbital and formulating single particle. And that was a criticism of this paper. It was by many that it cannot be, but that how to translate that into an experimental text. That was SSG. And SSG always experiences its one has to struggle, struggle, struggle. That was his point. <laughs> Incidentally, just to, well, he used to say this often, and then I came across because I'm a cricket fan and read um, at old time Pankaj Rai when he was facing Gil Christ in a famous Ranji match, which many of them don't know, early 60s. He faced and scored. Uh, he wrote somewhere I was reading, he was saying that he used to stand in front of the mirror and say, concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. Playing that in. So SSG used to say always struggle, 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 because I used to be despondent. To him. So although I did other research work at that time, that was with me. And ultimately in 2001, we came up with the way how that example can be made more concrete. I'm not going into those details, but that was an abstract very, but that's why it did not create any impact. But this explained and SSG and the year SSG passed away in October, just before that, that after 2001 paper attracted attention when you put it in. And immediately, it was a famous neutron interferometry group in Vienna of Helmut Raub, who was the first to show neutron interferometry experiments and do many fundamental work on this neutron interferometry. His group in Vienna did that experiment and was published in Nature. But SSG passed away just a month. At that time, the communication and I think so SSD was not aware of this. He passed away in October and somewhere in at that time internet. So, but anyway, so then after that, there is a long story of development with the paper, and because uh, he had also encouraged me at that time to see the practical application of this interpartite because. You are saying that this uh, Austrian paper, hmm. actually verified the entanglement and not only verification, importantly, verified the violation of single particle, which we had. And following this experimental thing, that was indicated in the 2001 paper, because our 1984 paper was... But then SSD, that was what I learned. SSD said that it's understandable. People will not be appreciating this paper. We have written it in very abstract terms, in anatomic. So how? So that was a long struggle. But that that is what SSG character. Unfortunately, I think we have not made much use. But he had those terrible insights, which I, I you know, and this is a deep passion. So. Now, and then uh, there is this, oh sorry, the application of, this should be 2020, there is a, this 2020 review. Now it has in applications and discussion of intraparticle, that term has been used, but the term which has now become more po po popular among the research, that is single particle entanglement. We use the term intraparticle because we thought to emphasize the coupling between, but now single, so that to emphasize that bell, so single particle bell inequality. So now single particle bell inequality is being used at, as is usual with our Indian works, and especially since it was published in physics later, many do not refer, many do not know also it was 1984 hour paper. 2001 paper is referred, and we, of course, the 2003 
నేచర్ పేపర్ వేయండి వేయట హెల్మెట్ ట్రాక్ పేట బట్ వాట్ ఈస్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ నౌ రీసెంట్లీ టూ థౌజండ్ ట్వంటీ ఆర్ కాంప్రిహెన్సివ్ రివ్యూ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ప్లేసెస్ అడ్వాన్స్ క్వాంటమ్ టెక్నాలజీ విచ్ ఈస్ నౌ వెరీ వెల్ సైటెడ్ జర్నల్ బికాస్ అప్లికేషన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ సింగిల్ పార్టికల్ అండ్ ఇట్ హౌ ఇన్ ఐఎమ్ నాట్ గోయింగ్ ఇన్ టు అండ్ ఆల్సో బట్ వాట్ ఎనాదర్ వెరీ so another important aspect is that sfg used to stress about whether in india when experiments on foundational aspects of these problems will be done when those experiments tel- teleportation and all these came up and then in the beginning of 2000 on this before he expired 2003 also he used to see so that and very 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 fortunate that also we have now a young researcher urbush sinha who when i interacted with him got fascinated by these foundational questions so i mean by the spirit and application of interparticle in cryptography is trying to so already two experiments on the language so i have been actively collaborating with her in this experiment and another important point before i come now it is how much time i have taken about 20 minutes D21. Then yes, I have. Okay, good. So, so that was, I think this development symbolizes what SHG is. So, it's the depth of this insight. Another very interesting, when we were also struggling to come up with some new type of application of Wales, because he was not satisfied, Eckhart and others, that is some, our NFT and all these people have done cryptography. They have done te- teleportation. So he used to tease me, what, what new can be different from that teleportation? And before he expired in October 2003, around 2002-2003, he suddenly was somehow from other line of studies, he got interested in issue of random numbers. And random numbers, as you all may know, technologically and fundamentally important. I mean, quantum communication comes from context because any encryption of message has to be done using truly random numbers so certifying true randomness is is an important problem in quantum communication in every area of science thanks chief i said why did that term but it is really the security of the key that is exchanged between the two but now the certification of genuine random numbers that he had started with that way the quantum theory because already at that time 2000 there were quantum random number generators coming up were using the intrinsic randomness of quantum but sfg in in what case be a potential quantum random number generator as a particle falling on a beam splitter which way it will go is intrinsically random so this is the origin of the quantum which came up in 2000 and somehow that i came to know about it in and i told this is g and we were discussing but then this criticism was that it was still not perfect because there can be imperfections in the mirror and all those things and and this whole is can come to know of, or there may be some fundamental description of that particle repeating so how one can go beyond this that was the question is g then posed and i have a deep regret that when he passed away in 2003 Honestly speaking, I got busy with the other research directly. We did not pursue this idea of whether we can go beyond the quantum theory. And then suddenly, in 2010, this very landmark paper came up by Pironi. And it was, you see the title of the paper, the random number system. So you see that the journey has come a full circle. EPR to all these things to this. certification of that so and that is really fascinating argument i, I cannot discuss here yeah. this line of development so i wish if ssg was there perhaps he was perhaps he would have said between 2003 10 repeatedly that try try to always i missed that coding so it is my deep regret but now we are trying to make amends uh, that has been my deep regret for the last and uh, because that, has become recently we and then for collaborating with urboshi we are trying now to come up with 
in spite of the, the, the problem with the pyronio type is that still you need to certification by Bell's theorem, so you need entangled state. And now with the fascination, we have proceeded in single system and their legged development, whether that can be used for random number. That has not yet been explored. So that with Urbush is an experimental group there. What we are trying to do is not only propose a scheme, but to have an experimental demonstration. Otherwise, we could. So if that happens, then at some point, I will love to talk here to your students because random, this whole idea of using Bell's theorem for certification of random, I think this idea of also using cryptographic security is great. But this one has, 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 has really been deep implications, which are yet trying to. So, anyway, I've already taken more than what you explored. That is what now the macros. So, how many I have? Exactly 16 minutes. Okay. So this is the direction. I'm leaving out the direction of the measurement problem on which we have worked and whether I guess because it's not possible to cover here. But this I want to emphasize that this was his led to, to set up questions, and these questions have turned out to be quite far-reaching questions with people. Why then? He said in fact, this classical limit of quantum mechanics question always troubled him. And we had extensive interaction to rigorously and the conditions under which that is the well-known classical limit. But he posed the question to find specific examples where classicality does not emerge from quantum mechanics, subjected to the usual limiting conditions that are employed in any textbook, textbook discussions are thoroughly inadequate. So we did a lot of say my PhD, that was a major time taken up apart from studying Bell and that. Not that we were able to produce any great piece of work at that time from these studies. We analyzed and we came up with some example, but they were of theoretical interest. But then 85 when Leggett came up with the, his work, Leggett had looked at this question from a different point of view than us. Leggett had asked the question that can we test the quantum mechanics in extreme macroscopic situations and demonstrate the validity or refute quantum But then in science, you can only falsify, not certify. So you need some kind of Bell inequality type argument. For that. that is what Leggett found. So I remember 84 of the completing physics this thing, we could not make much progress around. So when Leggett's paper published in 85, not in 86, I happened to go at that time, then Hitachi was taking interest in this bell and entanglement. And they started organizing a series which played a major role in the, of, the, of this subject, development of this subject. And I attended many, uh, there, there was one conference each three year, titled International Conference on Foundations of Quantum Mechanics in Light of New Technologies. That is at that time they had anticipated. And in that conference, 86 conference talk, Leggett gave a talk of this, which I heard. And immediately after coming back from that, I remember with this chief that I went to Kolani talk to him because there was some vacation time. And he was as usual, and we started looking at Leggett's work and all this. So I'm not, and then this key question came up to what extent it will macroscopic quantumness for us. Now, before going into that quickly, I'll come to that. In fact, that will be the main part. So, the way I'm going uh, to unit, so perhaps it will be better after 10 minutes, you warn me. So, I will not try to exceed the one hour limit by much, but maybe five minutes or so. Yeah. Mm. So, first, let me say why it is important. That is what I find. It's not usually explained. That why it is important. I say, okay, fine. So it is not only a question of testing limit of the theory. It is always important to test whether general relativity is valid for strong gravitational region, no experimental. These are all fine. The questions of limits of the theory. But here, the, the whole question is has a, has a deeper motivation. And that is a quantum mechanics we all know is for microphysical input. But to measure properties of systems, you need measuring apparatus. And any measuring apparatus has to be maximized. 
So at the very formulation of quantum mechanics, there is a dichotomic, you have an interaction. And measurement should be like any other physical interaction describable. And if quantum mechanics is a totalitarian theory, which is applicable for microscopic physics as well as for the macroscopy, then this whole measurement process has to be described quantum mechanics. So you have to apply quantum mechanics to measure measure. At the initial stage of quantum mechanics, it was understandable. Niels Bohr imposed that it, um, it is classical language has to be described measuring. So I used to postpone this problem for future part. That is fully understandable. Let the subject mature. That's it. So then the question comes, if you apply quantum mechanics, the entanglement occurs between the apparatus and the This is what Schrodinger at our book in S1925. When Schrodinger saw that is usually the genius of this. EPRS showed and then between, but Schrodinger then immediately showed that this feature is critical in any quantum measurement. And then it would lead to a paradoxical situation. How you explain the occurrence of a definite outcome in the measurement? This is the thing. So at that time, it was not recognized really because it's all philosophical. But now, gradually, experimentally, testable and different models. Of modif so then from 86 onwards, the enterprise team that can we modify quantum mechanics in a way, suggest models, modify, which will preserve the validity of quantum mechanics in the regime it has been already shown valid for, but will show departure from the specific limit, accounting for the observed classical behavior of the everyday world. So Leggett has been using from 1986 from the time he gave that talk, that was his first talk for this. He had also been struggling to make this acceptable to general community, this line of study to do now. So it takes time. So these are the two related questions. And then several approaches, as I have already said. So then, so, so to, in order to test these all models that have been proposed, and to discriminate, then with standard quantum, it becomes imperative to test the quantum mechanism in this. And these all are mass dependent. Because one, one could have said that why should macroscopicity may be defined in different way. But why mass is important here, that for increase, usually at measuring apparatus are all massive objects that has to be done. And also the modification to superposition has to occur at that scale if you have to explain the measurement. And there has been now concrete models proposed, but these different models have different predictions for the time scale at which uh, things can be observed and so on. So how to design experiments to test? So this is what is it. that was emerging in 90s. So we had a lot of, and in 97, I wrote a book called Conceptual Foundations of Quantum Mechanics, which has basically came out of my thesis and, and also the works we had read. So in that book, Legate Inequality, and that was then not yet acceptable. There was no other book. And the chapter on classical limit of quantum mechanics in that book is particularly there is because this was totally influenced by SSG because I learned everything which is good, which has been widely available. The reviews of the book came out in say physics today and other places it has come out. They really mentioned these things. So I would highly recommend students to read them. And fortunately, the book is available on the internet. But after 97, that's a long time, and the publisher thing, it can be downloaded from the internet. So chapter three, the classical element, so that contains the thing. So now, why, why, that I've already said why it is important. And now in last five years, a very important reason an enterprise has grown, which may be called the, by the way, negative calls this entire line of study as experimentally oriented studies and foundations. So this is the reason. Now, in this line of studies over the last five years, so what has been what has emerged is a study of interplay between foundations of quantum mechanics and testing quantum mechanics. Because 2017, there is this two works came out. And incidentally, one of the works the author is Shogoto Bosch. And Shogoto happened in 19, mid 90s to do research work with me when he was a postgraduate student. And he got interested in foundations because of the lectures he gave. He was in IIT school. And so he became so we worked. And I took Shogoto at that time to meet SSG 
and all these things. So Shogata's interest grew and we did paper at that time after completing. Later he has gone to UK, well established, he's, he's a well known center. But we continue to interact and over all these years. So he is also involved in this line of thought and recently we have also done work. But what is important that what this works show is that uh, one way of testing quantumness of gravity could be that whether gravitational interaction between two large massive objects can generate entanglement. And the prediction is that, and, and there is a well-known theorem called LOCC theorem in quantum information. Maybe. The local operation classical that entanglement can be generated between two objects to interaction by satisfaction. And on, it cannot be generated if operations are all local or only if classical communication exists. So if entanglement is generated by gravitational interaction, it should be a quantum mediator. This is a very general bell type argument, but, yeah. uh, but there are a lot of discussions around this work, but whatever, that provides also a motivation. And the kind of masses involved there, 10 to the power minus 14 kg, or is implemented. So it's also the kind of masses for which quantumness has to be also separately demonstrated. Because this enterprise depends on assuming the validity of quantum superposition at that level of these sort of studies. So before embarking on this sort of experience, one has to make sure that quantum superposition is going to that level. It is for that purpose, really, this is the work we did. I'm, I'm omitting. I'm omitting all the things. Uh, these are the experimental uh, candidate systems for, for that. Program. Just quickly, I just want to. These are the experiments that have been done for probing quantum mechanics in the macrology. But what you notice that for masses only up to 10 to the power 4 atomic mass unit, that the quantum interference has been. Uh, displayed. So, and also now there are candidate systems available up to 10 to the minus 14 kg. And, and, and with the recent gravitational wave detector incident, the, this, the mirrors that are used that have been cooled up to 77 nano in Kelvin. So it can be prepared with the Schrodinger coherence state type of this gravitational. So it's a 10 kg mass. So that has been quite exciting. Uh, so things which are uh, uh, and for which the inequality formulated by Leggett can be used as a tool. As I said, that no experiment has yet be sufficiently large mass, and also that the mass is a, is the much used relevant parameter for, for characterizing macroscopicity for studying all these fundamental questions, even in this gravitational. Quantum nest it is this large mass which is required for the gravitational interaction to be significant enough. If there are questions, I can elaborate a bit on that. But this is the work we did, and it has appeared this January. So I was very pleased that in SFG Sentinel here has appeared. But I miss very much the interactions with SFG, how he would have reacted to all this, because this was his most passionate. We always the classical need and to show quantumness at the macro, whether quantumness is really valid at the macroscope. And now with alternative models, we have been studying. And there's a beautiful scientific American article um, which explains on this research enterprise. This is a report on our work, but it gives the background very well and a wonderful YouTube talk by Sabine Hosenfelder after a paper as well, which explains the motivation. So the people have now accepted the motivation and it has become an enterprise. This is very important, but how many minutes I have? Now we have really five minutes. Five minutes, lovely. Because then this slide, then let me tell a, a bit the point that what it is all about this separate. This experiment is being done at University of Southern. Because they have just got the grant and it's everything. This is the, the, the beauty of this work is that we consider, and this and my fascination with this state originates from my PhD work, because SFT was fascinated by the Schrodinger coherence state. You all know Schrodinger coherence state, which is the minimum uncertainty product state, and the harmonic oscillator 
its peak follows classical motion. It is a non spreading wave pattern and the answer to minimum answer. So it is the most classical like description that emerges within quantum Schrodinger. And that was the motivation for Schrodinger to show. And this question was hinted at by Schrodinger's paper, but unless one reads those two papers closely, we will not be able to. SHG was able to spot it. And then he told me that it would be most fascinating if we can show quantumness for using this type of state for large numbers. So that was at the back of my mind, and I've been telling Shogoto where been because with Shogoto I've been doing a number of works over the years. So the system we have considered is this, and this is an oscillating system. So it's like a pendulum. That's why that name pendulum they gave in the scientific community. Quantum pendulum, they called it, instead of quantum Schrodinger. Now, pendulum, the, you shine the light of the light beam to see whether the pendulum is in the right half or the left. So it is a coarse grain spatial measure. So quantum mechanically, one has to handle how after a coarse grain spatial the post measurement state would look like, all these uh, technical details. And then the measurement is done that you first observe the particle, which half it is, then allow it to evolve. And then make a subsequent measurement at the time in which half it is. Now, the first measurement you do, you shine the beam. Either the particle is in that half or in the other. So, if it is in that half, it will scatter the light. If in the other half, it will not scatter it. And that was what Leggett said. Leggett said, let us utilize our thumb for negative result. That is interesting because no interaction, but still quantum mechanics predicts there should be. State update. Now the fashionable term people don't use collapse. It's a state update. That means because uh, that I'm not going into. So collapse of state update, and then it will evolve. So even for a macro object, that should occur. That means it's, it's that is what verified by the violation of Legendre. And that depends upon superposition of wave functions between the that negative result measurement affects the observed system because of the superposition. That it is, although physical interaction has not occurred between the probe, but still it is a wave function spread out all over. And in quantum mechanics, there is only wave function standard. It is wave function which is still participating in the interaction. So that we can test at a macro level. That is and why it is important because then in the quantum measurement, as I said, there are alternative models and also, and then for the gravity experiments also, it will be legitimate to use UN from this kind. It will give a strong legitimacy. Okay. And so now, now, now probably I've come to the end. So I'm omitting what are the other features. So the main feature here is that the scheme has been formulated such that in principle, it is applicable for any mass. So that is the way these are the schemes done. So that means if your technology is able, you can now test for any large mass. Although the present day technological development we have, it is implementable for 10 to the power minus 14 kg, which is about the mass of a small dust particle. Mass of a small and the size is about 50 to 100 nanometers. The kind of and it is the levitated nano oscillators with the Hendrick will be our experimenters because this nano optically levitated nano objects have now become a powerful tool and it is an oscillation levitated nano oscillator and with this technology and that, that kind of cooling to 10 to the power millikelvin and uh, ultra high vacuum. 10 to the power minus 10 milligram. One can reduce all decoherence and noise and everything. Yeah, that kind of thing. And also then hopefully, since the cooling of 10 kg mirror has been achieved, and 10 kg mirror cooling in gravitational wave detector prepares Schrodinger for it. So there is no possibility with that. So already these are listed. Uh, decoherence effect and noise has to be with that is a big experimental challenge but now with the technology available for this mass scale it is implementable and just to give you an idea just five minutes that this is what you are saying Leggett-Karp inequality 
Like it is simple, they say, consider a system evolving with time, sequential measurements of an observable, and the measured value plus one or minus. One. Then one can write, one can derive this inequality, which involves measurement of Q at time Q1 and measurement of time P2, based on the assumption that Q P1 and Q T2 have definite values prior to measurement. And the measurement at T2 time is not affected by the measurement at T1 time. This is called because you are arranging negative result measurement. So the classical intuition tells us that my earlier measurement should not affect the measurement. That is technically called non-invasive measurability. And non-invasive measurability, this is the pendulum example you shine and you don't get. That is non-invasive. But quantum mechanically, it is invasive. That you can guess. So quantum mechanically, even by a negative result. After quantum mechanical interaction, direct. So it is a wave function. And it is a superposition involved because Prior to measurement, it is in a superposition. Why do the state disturb? What is this state disturbance induced by a measure? It's because the state is in a superposition. So you make a measurement, it interacts. So the superposition is, is affected. The coherence is affected. And that's the disturbance induced by the measure. To what degree the coherence is affected. So that is what, and the derivation of this inequality is. Just analogous to the way then. So, just, just, just quickly, I mean, since you are interested, you see, this is what is first step. You could write an inequality of this form, whereas one has to pass it. Then realism means that these are the independent values that you can assign to Q and, and we consider two different observations, Q and R. For the two different distances. So the usual negative that same observability is considered. So we consider two different observations. And then in, on, with the assumption of realism in the explicit value. Realism means the value they can have well, is either plus one and minus one. And the value given assigned to a next measurement is not dependent upon measurement performed. Like the way Bell inequality is defined. Then taking the expectation value, you get this. So that is basically, the, okay, and then I'm not going into further, I'll explain negative result measurement, and you know, and this is the kind of results you expect. You see, you can get the violation of, of the order of 0.12 for any mass or any. You have to choose only the amount of violation depends on the second instant of measurements. It's, it's measurement at two instants, first measurement followed by second measurement. You are ensuring the first measurement to be negative result measurement. And then the assumption. And then measuring the correlation between the measured values and the inequality stays there. And the relevant parameters in the short coherent state oscillation are mass, initial peak momentum, and angular frequency. That is the advantage of this thing. For any possible values, you get violation of the inequality. No violation. No violation. If for this choice of parameters, no violation of this form of Leggett curve is not. It is no signaling in time. I have given two forms of magnitude of violation of LGI. You see, even for Bell inequality, you will not realize. The is not always violent. You have to choose the relative orientations of measurement suitably. Then only bell inequality is valid. Similarly, for Leggett curve, you have to choose the time separation of the measure appropriately. For that range, only inequalities. So in these cases, where the time separation was not properly. properly. To give an idea that 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 not. Not no, no, even for an entangle, that is that even for an entangle state, then the inequality is not necessarily violent. We have to choose the measurement, the, the orientations of this of the measurement, means whether you which component, sigma theta one, sigma three, with the values of theta one and theta two. To put it more concretely, the inequality 
dilation is a function of theta one, theta two. Theta one, theta two, the spin orientation. There are range of values of theta one for which it is violated. There are range of values for which it is present. In fact, John Bell took 10 years to, 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 uh, to complete this work because the basic idea he had, but he could not, you uh, have to, to this whole idea of choosing only a range of values for which the violation can be obtained. That now we have now various standard procedures to fix that values, but that is a, so, but then falsification is enough. If you just violate the inequality, that means locality and realism is this. Here also, so, 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 so just to illustrate that it is just a parallel line of development and its practical applications are also being explored and so on, as, as I have already written. And just I end as very recently with 16 microgram mechanical oscillator. Very recent experience. So, so that puts the pressure on the southern ten experiment. We are doing experiment and our people there to go up to 10 to the permanent. But the advantage in our skin, it is, as there is a, just one subtle point I must mention. It is one thing I have just to simplify talk, I have emphasized quantumness of macro, massive objects testing. But here one is testing legged dark inequality. Like in the Bell case, the inequality not only involves realism but locality. In this case, realism and non invasive measure. So the realism is also tested, macro realism is legate. So you have to show violation of legate curve. So showing quantumness is not enough. Like with the entangled state, you can show quantumness. That is for that you need to show violation of value. Because you can classically reproduce the entangled correlations, which satisfy them. And that is an important point. This is even now often our looks at the judge quantumness of something, like in the gravity works. This is the criticism of these works which have been done. So they have not yet shown violation of the limit. So the quantumness, it is not enough to produce entanglement by gravitational entanglement. You have to certify that entanglement to be quantum. You may say a conventional, but you don't know there may be some other better way of constructing semi-classical models with people. So it takes me to show formula. So that those works are going on. So here also, so this work has shown quantumness, but not violation of negative. But our work claims to do both. It should show the violation. That, that is the, the subtle point. So, and then uh, what I would conclude by this, uh, these are the comments made by Anthony Leggett on our work, which appeared in Physics World, that they reported our work. The first point is, of course, a technical point very valid. The, the, the control experiment has to determine the amount because you see, negative result measurement is not entirely, may not be interaction free classical. There could be some disturbance, just you know, shining a light. There will be the profile effect, like the wet packet will have some, so, so some age effect, which so that means even if the pendulum is in this half, you are shining in this half, you are. The, the light profile has to have a sharp drop at the mid region so that it does not affect the other region. So there could be all kinds of those classical disturbances which needs to be eliminated. That point, is, that point is an important point. This first point he has mentioned. Um, but the second statement is very interesting, and this is on this note I conclude my talk. He said that. These researchers have written, you know, convinced that quantum mechanics is going to continue working. I think SSG would have, uh, SSG is uh, always ambivalent about this point. Whether which legate is very strong that I am not so confident. But we poor guys cannot write a paper at that point of view. <laughs> we have to, but SSG was almost like. Legit, I must say that, and that kept him going that to look for examples and to test it. So I very, I just end by saying that I very much miss SSG. Uh, how he would have reacted to all these developments, I'm sure you'd have provided very deeper insights. So when I tell my other peers of this media, I read them talk about SSG and these questions. So it is real when people realize. So I'm
schedule, since we have got uh, a little late in our schedule and have had some discussion during the talk itself, let us take one or at most two pressing questions here from those particularly who have not participated in the discussion so far. Any question, particularly from students? Yeah, of course. You will probably share, we will need to share your slides with the organizer. Yes, I have already sent them. Is there any? Ah, there. Sir, could you please briefly discuss about the single particle entanglement? Single particle entanglement. Single particle entanglement. You want to speak in Bengal? Is it okay? And each speaker is requested to limit their talk to some seven minutes or so. First of all, thank you for Vikirudha for giving me this opportunity to speak. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. It's okay. 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 আলোচনা আমি একটু বলবো যে উনি মনের দিক থেকেও একটা মানে অদ্ভুত সারল্যের পরিচয় আমরা পেয়েছিলাম যেটা হচ্ছে আমাদের ব্যাচটা বিশেষ করে খুব একটা সিরিয়াস ছিল না মানে এমনি তখনকার দিনে ওই যে সেই হাই সেকেন্ডারি পরে বা টুয়েলভ এর পরে যে মারপিট করে আমি পেয়েছি সব বিরাট বিরাট পেপার পড়ে ফেললাম প্রায় রিসার্চ করে ফেললাম পেপার লিখে ফেললাম প্রায় এইরকম কোনো ভাবনা চিন্তাই ছিল না ফিজিক্স এর বেশ কমফোর্টেবল লাগে অন্য সাবজেক্টের তুলনায় সেই জন্য পড়ব मोटामुटी बुजे ग्लस আলোচনা বিশেষ করতাম ভয় পেতাম সত্যি কথা বলতে তো তখন আমাদের একটা সেমিনার মতন উনি অর্গানাইজ করতে শুরু করেছিলেন যেখানে ফার্স্ট ইয়ার সেকেন্ড ইয়ার মানে আমরা জয়েন ছিলাম তো সত্যি কথা বলতে কি মানে রিসার্চ এর ব্যাপারটা যে কি সেটা কিন্তু প্রথম ওনার কাছেই শিখেছি দেখ এবার আরেকটা স্মরণ মনের পরিচয় দিই সেটা হচ্ছে যে কোন একটি টেকনিক্যাল কারণে তখন যিনি হেড অফ দ্য ডিপার্টমেন্ট ছিলেন তিনি কোনো পরীক্ষায় অংশগ্রহণ করতে পারতেন তাই তারপরে যিনি সিনিয়র মোস্ট ছিলেন তিনি এস এস জি সেই সমস্ত পরীক্ষা উনি অংশগ্রহণ করতেন এবং এস এস জি খুবই নন ইউনিক প্রশ্ন দিতেন এবং একটা গুণ ছিল যে একটু অ্যাপ্রোচটা যদি কারেক্ট হতো তাহলে কিন্তু परीक्षार प्रश्न एकदम ही मैंने प्रश्न कर 
রিসার্চ করতেই হবে কেন মানে আমি যদি গান ভালোবাসি আমি নিজে না গান গাইতেই পারি কিন্তু আমি তো গান এনজয় করতে পারি তাই ফিজিক্স যদি আমি এনজয় করতে চাই তাহলে ফিজিক্স রিসার্চ করতে হবে কেন তখন উনি বলছেন না ফিজিক্স এমন একটা জিনিস তাতে যদি তুমি সত্যি থাকতে চাও এবং তাকে যদি উপলব্ধি করতে চাও তোমার নিজেকেও সেখানে অ্যাক্টিভলি থাকতে হবে ওর প্যাসিভলি থাকা যায় না এই একটা কথা মনে আছে খুব সুন্দর আর একটা কথা মানে এগুলো পরে আরো রিয়েলাইজ করছি যে কত ভালো আর কত ইম্পর্টেন্ট এটা উনি বলছেন যে তোমার রাইভার পাশে যে কাজ করছে তোমার টেবিলে বসে সে নয় তোমার রাইভার হচ্ছে নেচার নেচার হ্যাজ প্রেজেন্টেড ইউ উইথ সাম প্রবলেম ইটস লাইক আ ক্রসওয়ার্ড পাজল তুমি একটা ওয়ার্ড করেছো তার হয়তো এ আর বিটা আরেকজন পেয়েছে সে একটা সাত অক্ষরের ওয়ার্ড খুঁজবে সে অন্যটা খুঁজবে এইভাবে পারস্পরিক মানে এর মধ্যে দিয়ে কোঅপারেশনের মধ্যে দিয়ে রিসার্চ হয় রিসার্চের রাইভাল তোমার কাছে নেচার নট দা আদার পার্সন নট ইউর কলিগ থ্যাংক ইউ now i have one more duty i have to read out a passage composed by professor amol rai choudhury after ss this death and i thank parangama for sharing that script with me i am reading out the relevant parts of this piece it has to be in bengali uddhapak shamol shengupta shong am i audible acha No, I have to scoot so low that I'm developing a backache. Yeah. Okay. Amar Uddhapak Shamol Shengup Prashan ne Amar Prutom Puri Chaya Unishu Pancha Shet Dasoke. Puri Chaya is the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science and Library. Shamol Logo Tafun Mokosh Shaler Ek Shodkari College Ed Uddhapak Shathin Bhabhe Gobeshan Ar Agrahe Chupit Shomay Praya Puti Dini Oye Library Dite Eshe Eshe বেশ কয়েক ঘন্টা এক নাগারে পড়াশোনা করছেন আর আমি ওই অ্যাসোসিয়েশনেরই বেতনভুক গবেষক প্রতিদিন কিছুটা সময় লাইব্রেরিতে কাটাই পরিচয়ের সেতু বন্ধন করেছিলেন ডক্টর মনোজেন্দ্রলাল চৌধুরী তিনি আমার সঙ্গে একই বিভাগে গবেষণায় রত শ্যামলগ এবং আমি যদিও দুজনেই তাত্ত্বিক পদার্থবিদ্যায় গবেষণা করতাম কিন্তু আমাদের গবেষণার বিষয় ছিল সম্পূর্ণ আলাদা শ্যামলবাবুর বিষয় তখন নিউক্লিয়ার ফিজিক্স আমার বিশ্বতত্ত্ব ও সাধারণ সাধারণ ব্যক্তিগতা তা হলেও পরস্পরের কাজের আলোচনা করতে গিয়ে আমরা উৎসাহিত উদ্দীপিত হয়ে উঠতাম মনের দিক থেকে কাছাকাছি চলে আসতাম ওই সময় ওপর মহল থেকে আমার গবেষণার স্বাধীনতার উপর আঘাত এলো আমার উক্ত ব্যথিত মন শ্যামলবাবুর মধ্যে আবিষ্কার করলো এক দরদীপ অনেক বছর পরে আমরা হলাম প্রেসিডেন্সি কলেজের সহকর্মী শ্যামলবাবুকে যতই দেখলাম মনে হলো এই একজন মানুষ যিনি আপাত দৃষ্টিতে খুবই সাধারণ কিন্তু যার যুক্তিবাদী সত্যনিষ্ঠ একাগ্রচিত্ত আদর্শবাদী মন সত্যি অসাধারণ আর সবচেয়ে উল্লেখযোগ্য হল তার ধন মান যশের প্রতি সম্পূর্ণ অনিহা আমার মনে হয়েছে তার প্রচার বিমুখতার জন্য সাধারণ মানুষ এক মহান আদর্শবাদী কর্মযোগী দরদি মানুষকে জানতে পারল আমি শুধু কামনা করব শ্যামলবাবুর মতো শত শত মানুষ আবির্ভূত হোক তাদের প্রভাবে মানুষের চরিত্র হবে উন্নততর জীবন অনেক সুন্দরতর তাই যেন হয় দিস ইজ ফ্রম প্রফেসর অমল রায় Okay, the next person I will request to say something about SSG is Professor Indra Das Gupta from the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science. Indra. Can we just take a few slides? Oh, hi, Nishchun. Okay. Okay. That will help me. I will tell some. That will help me. I will copy it. 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 আচ্ছা <laughs> 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 
Okay, perfect. Yes. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. And I begin by thanking Professor Shuchatana Chatterjee as well as Professor Vishwarup Mukhopadhyay for giving me this opportunity to come and speak about my beloved teacher, Professor Shamal Shengupto. Well, so as you can see, Shamal Shengupto and Presidency College, uh, in fact, is inseparable. Well, so I'll begin with my personal memories. So I went to Presidency College during the period 1984 to 1987, and also hanged around for another year because our results were declared in 1988. So, of course, I first met SSG as a teacher. And in our first year, he taught us mathematical methods. And I have listed this topic because it's a special reason. He taught us calculus of several variables and particularly emphasized on constraint minimization, uh, this concept of Lagrange's undetermined multiplier, which will hardly find uh, being discussed in any textbook at that point of time. He talked about differential equations and also emphasized on Paphians which found extensive applications in thermodynamics, talked about Fourier series, Fourier transform, and told us about Dirac delta function, and told us that Dirac delta functions are not quite functions, but they are some different kind of entities, and which brought in excitement in the class. Well, so, and at that point of time, he was also writing a book on mathematical methods. And I don't know whether this book was ever published, uh, but this we could uh, essentially go to his office at any point of time and can consult that book, right? So this is... And uh, of course, in third year, he taught us statistical mechanics and a bit of. Huh? It was used to be there in uh, SST's office, and after that, what happened, I really don't know. It was a pretty thick, fat book on mathematical methods. I mean, I, I think uh, students uh, around that time all uh, did consult that book. He was writing that book. Yeah. Yes. And I think an abridged version of this book possibly appeared somewhere and so on, right? Yeah. yeah but I have never seen that book. Okay, good. But anyway, that's good. Okay, so third year is taught us statistical mechanics and solid state physics. Well, so what did we learn from SST? Right? The first thing is that he wanted us to be independent and emphasized on self study. And this is the specific word struggle, struggle, struggle. And before his lectures, right, I think 15 minutes he used to give us used to share with us its philosophy about science, physics, and how you can become a scientist, right? And that's what it is. And he said that you should consult books, talk to teachers, peers, and that is the best source of learning. And that is questioning and made us confident by answering all the stupid questions that we had, right? So we've heard that we have asked uh, really great questions, but later on realized that that was essentially a stupid question. And he essentially emphasize thinking and not rote learning and preparing for examination. He was very much against that you essentially go ahead and prepare for examination. So that's what it is. And the most important thing is emphasized on teamwork and which was pretty rare because if you see our scientific community, all are essentially surrounded by individual excellence, right? To prepare a team and a group and work together was very rare and it still continues. He emphasized the importance of teamwork and discussion, solving a problem, and identify and identifying a problem. And it's important, not the technique. So what I'm what I'm trying to tell, and that was, sir, we would like to understand field theory. We would like to understand renewables. This is that's not important. First, come up with a problem. If that or problem requires uh, field theory, learn field theory. If that problem requires RG, learn RG. Right. So that's what, and I think that's a very important advice which we got from him encouraged us to do experiments, which was also pretty rare in presidency college at that point of time. I remember suggesting us to design an experiment to understand regulation. Well, so since time is short, and so research activities of SST, and I was going through the list, which was sent to me by Shu Chetona. Uh, and also I uh, got this article being currently signed by Devashi Shen. So Professor SST worked on nuclear physics, electronic structure, optical properties, solids, I'm trying to say his uh, range of research, lattice dynamics, and where at that point of time we hooked a model, the theoretical work, and which explained experimental results. If you look at these papers in Quizrep B, his theory has been compared with experiments, which I would also guess was pretty rare. He has published, and, and of course, general physics and foundation of quantum mechanics, which Professor Depong told us. 
He had about more than 125 papers in peer reviewed journals and 15 PhD students. A teacher doing research, right, publishing papers, guiding PhD students. And I know some of my colleagues and friends, right, who says that if you do, if you want to do research, you can never teach, right? And I think he is possibly one of the examples which possibly will uh, make them convinced. Well, and and the thing which I was essentially extremely impressed, I was not knowing about that. He essentially established what is known as solid state physics research center, in the Department of Physics Presidency College. This group activity is a very important thing in doing modern research, and that's what I think was possibly initiated in Kolkata by Professor Shamal Shanigoto. And also later in 1990, a condensed Physics Research Center in Jadavpur University. Well, time is short, so I'll end. Uh, so this is SSG, and I think SSG is the first person who was much ahead of his time. And I think we most of us did not understand him. So And, and, and I think uh, he possibly sacrificed his life to make us understand what he wanted us to know. Well, with this, I thank you all for your attention. Thanks a lot, Indra. Now we'll end this, at least the physical part of this discussion, by inviting two <coughs> persons to reminisce, both of whom did not work precisely in SSG's work. First, I request Professor Onirvan Kundu of the University of Calcutta to say something. বলতে গেলে আমার যেটা প্রথমেই মনে হয় যে আমরা শ্যামল বাবু খুব অযোগ্য ছাত্র খুবই অযোগ্য এবং আমার ধারণা আমাদের ক্লাসে যারা পড়তো তারা সকলেই একই কথা বলবে যে তারা খুবই অযোগ্য ছাত্র তার কারণ হচ্ছে মানে কিছু কিছু ক্লাসে বসলে যিনি পড়াচ্ছেন তার তুলনায় নিজেদের খুব অকিঞ্চিত কর মনে হয় মনে হয় যে কিছুই তো জানি না ক্লাসে বসে কি করছি প্রথম প্রেসিডেন্সি কলেজে এসেছি এবং এখান থেকে এসেছিলাম একটা মফসলের স্কুল সেখান থেকে প্রেসিডেন্সিতে এসে প্রথমেই মানে প্রথম দিনেই শ্যামলবাবুর ক্লাস এবং মানে আপনারা সবাই জানেন সেই শ্যামলবাবুর একটা তখন পরীক্ষামূলক পড়ানোর পদ্ধতি ছিল মানে সেটা হয়তো ছাত্রদের কাছ থেকে তিনি অনেক বেশি আশা করতেন ছাত্রদের মানে তারা কতটা সময় দেবে তারা কতটা পরিশ্রম করবে আমরা সেসব না কিছু করতে পারি আমরা মানে এই যে বললাম যে খুবই অযোগ্য ছাত্র ছিলাম এবং শুধু ক্লাসে মনে হতো যে কিছুই বুঝতে পারছি না ঠিক আছে এরকম বেশ কয়েকদিন চলবে আমরা শুধু এইটুকু বুঝতে পারি ইনি অত্যন্ত পণ্ডিত মানুষ শুধু পণ্ডিত নয় অত্যন্ত মনীষী এরুডাইট পার্সোনালিটি যাকে বলে মানে শুধুমাত্র ফিজিক্স ফিজিক্স এর বাইরে আরো বহু বিষয় নিয়ে নেওয়ার প্রচুর জ্ঞান সেটা আমরা বুঝি তার কিছুদিন পরে তখন পুজোর ছুটি বোধ হয় পুজোর ছুটির পরে খুলেছে হঠাৎ আমাকে একদিন ডাক ডেকে বলে নাই শোনো তোমাকে একটা কাজ দেবে কাজ দেবে না আমি রিসার্চ এর কোনো গল্প নেই আর ওই যে পারঙ্গমা দিয়ে বললো আমাদের সময় মানে কি বিএস এর ফার্স্ট ইয়ারে আবার কি রিসার্চ কেন কি কাজ স্যার তোমাকে না একটা বই দেবো তুমি বইটা পড়ো এই গল্পটা আমি প্রথমবার বলেছি আবারও বলছি এই বইটি পড়ো বইটা পড়ে আমাকে বলবে বইটা কেমন লাগে ভাবলাম গল্পের বইটাই দেবেন বোধ হয় না ফিজিক্স এর বই এটা বই ধরে দিয়ে বলেন তার এই বইয়ের একটা ভূমিকা আছে ভূমিকাটা তোমাকে অনুবাদ করতে বাংলায় না আমি বাংলায় অনুবাদ করবো বলে না এই যে তোমাদের আগের বাড়ি কেউ বলেছে তুমি নাকি মাধ্যমিকে বাংলায় লেটার পেয়েছি পাপ কর্ম করেছিল যাই হোক বইটা হচ্ছে গ্যালিলিওর একটি বিখ্যাত গ্যালি মানে তিনটি লোক তারা আলোচনা করছে যে সূর্য কেন্দ্রিক এই যে মডেল এটা ঠিক কি ঠিক নয় তার মধ্যে একজন হচ্ছে মানে গ্যালিলিওর গ্যালিলিওরই প্রতিজ্ঞ একজন একজন হচ্ছে তার সুযোগ্য ছাত্র আর একজন সে একটু বোকাশোকা টাইপের লোক তার নাম সিম্পলিসিও 
মানে সে ওই সোজা কথা পোপের প্রতিভু বা বাইবেলের প্রতিভু বলা যায় তাকে বোঝানো হচ্ছে তা আমি তো বইটা পড়লাম এই বইয়ের ভূমিকা একটা লিখেছে ভূমিকা লিখেছে আনসে সেটা জার্মান থেকে ইংরেজি ইংরেজি পড়লাম বাংলা আমি একটা বাংলা করলাম সেটা শ্যামলবাবু প্রচুর সেটা সংশোধন টংশোধন করলেন করে তারপরে তখন কলেজ স্ট্রিট থেকে অন্বেষা বলে একটি পত্রিকা বেরোতো তাতে সেটা বের এই গল্পটাই এরপরে শ্যামলবাবু বলে আচ্ছা ধরো তুমি যদি ওই গ্যালেরিয়র ছাত্রটির জায়গায় থাকতে তুমি কি করে বোঝাতে এই প্রশ্নের উত্তর দেওয়ার পক্ষে সম্ভব নয় বললো আমি না এটা দেখো এইভাবেই তো ফিজিক্স শিখতে হবে না আর শ্যামলবাবুর সঙ্গে আমার যেটা শেষ দেখার তখন শ্যামলবাবু যাদবপুরে আসতেন নিয়মিত আসতেন যাদবপুরে সলিড সেট ফিজিক্স এর যে গ্রুপটা সেখানে আসতেন এবং আমি তখন যাদবপুরে জয়েন করেছি কিছুদিন হলো স্যার কেমন আছে নিত্য শ্যামলবাবু আমায় বললেন তুমি কি করছো স্যার এরকম কাজ করি পার্টিকেল ফিজিক্স এর আচ্ছা ঠিক আছে তারপর একটা অদ্ভুত প্রশ্ন করতেন আচ্ছা তুমি যে কাজগুলো করছো সেগুলো কি মানে তোমার ইম্পর্টেন্ট বলে মনে হচ্ছে সেগুলো কি সত্যি ইম্পর্টেন্ট নাকি তোমার যেগুলো ইম্পর্টেন্ট মনে হচ্ছে বলে মানে সত্যি ইম্পর্টেন্ট কিনে জানি না কিন্তু আমি নিশ্চয়ই ইম্পর্টেন্ট মনে হচ্ছে বলে করছি বলে না মানে ব্যাপারটা কি এরকম যে আরো অনেক ইম্পর্টেন্ট কাজ আছে সেগুলো তুমি করতে পারবে না সেগুলো সেই জন্য তুমি যেগুলো পারছো সেগুলোই করছো কি বলি বললাম যে হ্যাঁ অনেক তো প্রবলেম আছে সেগুলো হাত দেওয়া আমার সাধ্য নয় তখন শ্যামল বাবু খুব হতাশ হয়ে বলে তাহলে সব করছো কেন আর কি করা যাবে তা আমি বুঝতে পারলাম যে উনি খুবই হতাশ হলেন কিন্তু শ্যামল বাবুর কাছ থেকে আমি যেটুকু মানে সত্যিকারের শিখছি সেটাই ওয়ান টু ওয়ান ইন্টারাকশন যে একজন মানুষের মধ্যে কত বিভিন্ন বিষয়ে কত রকম এবং শুধু মানে এমনি জ্ঞান নয় জিনিসটাকে ভালোভাবে যুক্তি দিয়ে অ্যানালিটিক্যালি দেখার ক্ষমতা সেটুকু শ্যামলবাবুর কাছ থেকে আমার প্রাপ্তি তো আর একটা কথা বলি মানে সেটা হয়তো আমার জানি না বলা উচিত কি না সেটা হচ্ছে শ্যামলবাবুর যে কাজ প্রথম দিকে নিউক্লিয়ার ফিজিক্সে কাজ করতেন তারপরে তো সলিড সেট ফিজিক্সে কাজ করেছেন শ্যামলবাবু জিওলজিও কখনো করেননি অ্যাস্ট্রোফিজিক্স কখনো করেননি শ্যামলবাবুর জন্ম শতবার্ষিক অনুষ্ঠানে একবার জিওলজিতে হয়েছে এখন স্কুল অফ অ্যাস্ট্রোফিজিক্স করছে খুবই ভালো কাজ করছে কিন্তু আমার মানে ইচ্ছে ছিল ফিজিক্স ডিপার্টমেন্ট থেকে আরো বেশি পার্টিসিপেট থাকবে সেখানে ছাত্রছাত্রীদেরও তো বেশি করে জানা উচিত যে এইরকম একজন লোক এক সময় এই ডিপার্টমেন্টে ছিলেন এই ডিপার্টমেন্টে পড়িয়েছেন সেটা হলে হয়তো একটু ভালো লাগে ছাত্ররা আছে কিন্তু আর একটু আমি বেশি পার্টিসিপেন্ট আশা করেছিলাম যাই ঠিক আছে ধন্যবাদ The last in this series is a person who did not actually, was, wasn't actually taught by SSG, but knew him in another capacity, very significant. And since this person is one of the most successful teachers of our time, let's hear of his review. And he is Professor Anandu Das Gupta of Aisa Kolkata. Anandu. ভালো <laughs> কিন্তু প্রথম সাক্ষাৎটা খুব যে ভালো হয়েছিল সেটা আমি বলবো না সেই ইতিহাস একটু বলি সেটা হচ্ছে যে আমরা যাদবপুরে ছাত্র ছিলাম এবং যাদবপুরে আমরা অন্য কোন ব্যাপারে কোনো খুঁজি রাখতাম মানে 
যাদবপুরে আছি সংস্কৃতি করতে তাও একবার মুখে তোকে গান টান গায়ে শুনতে যাই তার বাইরে কিচ্ছু তা হঠাৎ করে শুনি যে প্রেসিডেন্সি যে ছাত্র সে নাকি সাংবাদিক ভালো ছাত্র হ্যাঁ সত্যি ভালো ছাত্র সে একটা বিষয় টক দিচ্ছে একটা নিজের পেপার লিখেছে তা বলে ওই লিখিয়েছেন অবভিয়াসলি তাকে দিয়ে জোর করে অলমোস্ট তারপর সে সব টক দিচ্ছে এবং সে যাদবপুরে টক দিতে আসে তো সেই ছেলেটির সাথে পরে আমার ভালোই আলাপ হয়ে গিয়েছিল কিন্তু প্রথমে তখন আমার একটুখানি সত্যি কথা বলতে কি এরকম হয় মানে ছাত্ররা দেখেও আবার অন্য জায়গায় গিয়ে টকও দেয় শক্ত শ্যামলবাবু সঙ্গে সঙ্গে তার স্বামী বলছে না এটা আমরা তখন দেখতে পাইনি কিন্তু এটা যে বলা হচ্ছে ঠিক আসলে এটা কিন্তু এভাবেই করা উচিত মানে সেটা আমি দেখেছিলাম যে উনি সঙ্গে সঙ্গে অ্যাপ্রিসিয়েট করেছেন লোকে কি বলেছে এবং তখন তখন তার মতো মানে পেপারের সাথে তার কোনো সম্পর্ক ছিল না কারণ পেপারে সেটা লেখা ছিল কিন্তু তাদের যে চিন্তা ভাবনা ওরকম ভাবে ছিল না সেটা তিনি কিন্তু সেই মুহূর্তে বলার সঙ্গে সঙ্গে অ্যাপ্রিসিয়েট করে এবং সেটা স্বীকার করেছে সবার সামনে যে আমরা এটা এভাবে ভাবিনি এভাবে পাওয়া উচিত সেই বিরাট গুণটা কিন্তু খুব বেশি লোকে থাকে না আর তারপরে আমার সাথে শ্যামলবাবুর যে শ্যামলবাবুর যে ইন্টারাকশন তার প্রধান কারণটা হচ্ছে এটা পেপার মানে আমার জীবনের প্রথম পেপার যেটা হতে পারতো না পেপার বলাই ভালো কারণ সেটা পাবলিশ হয়নি কোথাও সেটা তো কিন্তু আমার ঢোকাটা বেশ অ্যাক্সিডেন্টাল ইন দা সেন্স যে আমাদের একজন সিনিয়র আমরা তখন আমি তখন বোধ হয় ফার্স্ট ইয়ারে বলতে বা হ্যাঁ না বিএসসি ফাইনাল ইয়ারে আর আমার সিনিয়র কৌশিক রায় তাকে অনেকে এখানে চেনে কালটিভেশনে কৌশিকের সঙ্গে শ্যামলবাবুর অনেক দিনের আলাপ তার প্রধান কারণ কারণ হচ্ছে কল্যাণ মানে আমারও হতে পারতো কারণ কল্যাণে মামাবাড়ি মাসির বাড়ি বলে আমি রেগুলার যেতাম কিন্তু আবার ওই মামাবাড়ি মাসির বাড়িতে গিয়ে আড্ডা মারা ওই অবধি আবার শ্যামলবাবু বলে একজন আছে তিনি কল্যাণে থাকেন তার বাড়ি যাবে এত সাহস আমার ছিল তা এই নিয়ে সেই পেপার একটা ওরা দুজন করেছিলেন বেশ অঙ্ক কোষে সেটা করেছিলেন সেটা যে ওই শ্যামলবাবু যে ফান্ডামেন্টাল কাজের প্রতি ইচ্ছা সেটাতে পেপারটা ছিল হচ্ছে ওই রিয়েটিভিটির মানে রোডেন্স ট্রান্সফরমেশন একটা প্রমাণ যেখানে স্পিড অফ লাইট ব্যবহার করা হবে না মানে স্পিড অফ লাইট কনসিস্টেন্সি কনসিস্টেন্সি ব্যবহার না করে রিয়েটিভিটিতে কত দূর যাওয়া যায় সেটা তো ওরা একটা জিনিস করেছিলেন তাদের আমাকে কৌশিক সে গপ করে বলেছিল বলি আমার তখন মনে হয়েছে যে এই অঙ্কটা এইভাবে না করার অনেক সহজে করা যায় আমাদের সেটাই অবস্থা যে অমলবাবু অমলবাবুকে যেমন আমি যাদবপুরে আসতে বহুবার দেখেছি কথাও বলেছি কিন্তু তার জীবদ্দশায় তিনি যে নাম করা লোক ছিলেন আপনাকে জানতামই না আমি ঠিক আছে আসেন বাদুল কথাবার্তা বলেন ভালো কথা কিন্তু আমরা ছাত্ররা এতটাই অজ্ঞ ছিলাম যে ওই দুজন লোকের পরিমাপটা কিরকম সেটা আমরা বুঝতে পারি এনে শ্যামলবাবু ডেকেছেন তা কমল কোলাইতে তার বাড়িতে ডেকেছেন আমি কোলাইতে ছুটিতে যাব তার বাড়ি গেছি উনি শুনেই প্রথম উনি প্রথমেই বললেন হ্যাঁ তুমি এটা তো দারুণ জিনিস বলেছো আমরা এই পেপারটা লিখছি তোমার নাম থেকে সত্যি কথা বলছি পেপারের নাম ঢোকানো মানে কি সেটাও বুঝতাম না হ্যাঁ কিন্তু এনে সেই পেপার পরে ছাপা হয়নি তার প্রচুর ইতিহাস আছে মানে আমেরিকান জার্নাল অফ ফিজিক্স সাথে প্রচুর মারামারি করে শেষমেশ তারা বলেছে আমরা এই বিষয়ে অনেক পেপার ছেপেছি আর ছাপবো না তারপরেই আর একজন আমেরিকানের সেই পেপারই ছেপেছে প্রায় ছুটে নিবে সেটা তো অন্য কথা কিন্তু সেই সেই সময় এটা আমার মনে আছে দুটো জিনিস একটা শ্যামলবাবুর বাড়িতে দুর্দান্ত ভালো রুচি খেয়েছিলাম এটা অবভিয়াসলি শ্যামলবাবুর কৃষ্টি নয় কিন্তু ভীষণই ভালো খেয়েছিলাম এবং তারপর উনি আমাদের নিয়ে পিকনিক গার্ডেনের যে লেক তার পাশে বেড়াতে গেছি এবং তখন কিন্তু অনেক কথা বলেছিলেন যে শুধু শুধু যে বিজ্ঞান কিরকম হওয়া উচিত তা নয় কিন্তু মানে জীবন কিরকম হওয়া উচিত মানুষের প্রতি মানুষের ব্যবহার কিরকম হওয়া উচিত তা নিয়ে অনেক কথা বলেছিলেন তখন হয়তো সব কথা বুঝিও নেই তো আজকে মনে হয় যে আরেকটু হয়তো ম্যাচুয়ার অবস্থা বা একটু ডিসেপ্টিভ অবস্থা সে সুন্দর অনেক আমার নিজের কাজে গেছে এই তারপরে কিন্তু সত্যি কথা বলতে কি শ্যামলবাবুর সাথে আর আমার কোনোদিন দেখাও হয়নি আর কিন্তু আর একটা জিনিস আমি এই রিসেন্টলি আমি এই ওনার যে বইটা রচনা বইটা যে পাওয়া যায় সেটা খুঁজবে 
এই এখানে আছে আচ্ছা আমি মানে অনেক কষ্ট করে অনেক খুঁজে এখানে একটা বৈচিত্র বই দোকান আছে সেখান থেকে সেখান থেকে এক কপি পেয়েছিলাম সেখানে দেখেছিলাম উপন্যাস গুলো কি সাংঘাতিক ভালো লেখা যেটা ওনার লেখা উপন্যাস যে দারুণ লেখা সেটা কতজন পড়েছেন আমি জানি না কিন্তু বেশ ভালো লেখা মানে বেশ প্রথম সারি উপন্যাসিকদের মতো লেখা সেটা আমি হলফ করে বলতে পারি ভীষণই ভালো এর থেকে বেশি আমার কিছু বলার নেই কাজে thanks a lot and i hope through the accounts of these four or five persons uh, some of the some of what i couldn't elaborate in my initial cryptic remarks are actually unfolding themselves when i said he was much more than just a teacher a teacher with a difference and much more i hope all of them have exemplified that just to give you one this thing uh, this about this novel professor omol rai chaudhary once he was profusely appreciative of samadhova as a colleague he told our colleague narayan narayan banerji narayan has told me so once they were trying to understand i mean talking about samadhova ekr said suddenly in bengali to samadhova shotina samadhova oi uponnash ta porechho and they said samadhova ke ja tumra dekhecho kichchu cheno ni oi uponnash ta moto chite parbe I thought I should mention this here. Okay, now Suchetana, we have a couple of online accounts. First by whom? Now, who is the first speaker? Okay. Okay. দেবাশিস
অভিষেক বাবু আছে ইনভাইটিং মি টু টক অবাউট শ্যামল বাবু আই মিন it's a really great honor uh, for me uh, because he's uh, he's really the person who uh, who's uh, i mean uh, hugely responsible for shaping my career uh, and my interest in statistical physics so uh, so i'll basically read out from this article that i had uh, uh, written for the uh, this centenary centenary celebrations for uh, ssg last year uh, so uh, dr devashish shen has had in fact asked me to write this <clears throat> and uh, i had put down my whatever i could remember uh, about my association with uh, shamur babu so this is uh, what i'll basically read out uh, from this article uh, so okay so i uh, studied in presidency college from 1987 to 90 uh, for my bachelor's degree in physics <clears throat> uh, Uh, at presidency i was uh, really fortunate to have many amazing and passionate uh, teachers uh, among them the person who had the greatest impact on my great uh, growth as a physicist was uh, professor shamul sen gupta or ssc as we called him then <clears throat> my uh, interactions with him started mainly during the second year when he taught us a course on statistical mechanics uh, uh, so my memory is not very good but i uh, what i remember is that even in the first year uh i joined a group of students who uh, used to have regular discussions on various topics that were kind of outside uh, of our regular <coughs> coursework uh and ssc was one of the main mentors of this mentors of this activity uh and so already from the first year i started to uh, uh, get to know him <clears throat> so uh, but in the second year uh, uh, in during the statmec course that he taught us uh, that's that's really when i uh, started interacting with him more uh, <clears throat> seriously so his lectures were actually not very popular uh, uh, I, i think that was because he would give us the big picture but not work through all the details uh, and uh, i i found his lectures uh, great because he made the principles very clear and uh, but uh, because he would not work through the details one had to struggle to understand the details so this was really important i mean uh, and uh, every homework problem in his class required a struggle and in the end one would uh, always uh, gain some deep insight okay so i really started enjoying this uh, struggle and i now realize that this struggle is very important in the training of a scientist uh and uh, i cannot help uh, comparing ssg with another really outstanding teacher we had uh, akr who uh, taught, taught us uh, special relativity and electrodynamics uh, so uh, in contrast to ssg's class akr's uh, lectures were always uh, crystal clear and every uh, everything he worked out and explained very insightfully uh, so akr's class lectures were uh, easy to follow and also great fun Uh, but very different from ssg's uh, style so akr of course uh, lectures were of course much more popular uh, with the students uh, and uh, very different from ssg's style 
so, uh, but the struggle to understand SAG's lecture had a greater impact on me. Uh, and it forced me to read through books <clears throat> such as books by Landau. So he would always re refer to these books, Landau, Tallman, and Dr. Her, and many others. And uh, his lectures actually made me realize the beauty of statistical physics. Uh, I mean, before like his lectures, I I had no interest in statistical physics, but uh, he, he made me aware of the great uh, deep questions related to entropy and ir irreversibility. And these are questions that I still uh, continue to think about and uh, work on. <clears throat> uh, so from SAC, I learned that uh, it was not just theory and formalism one should uh, focus on. It was equally important to understand the connections to real world uh, phenomena. I started realizing that real world uh, phenomena were very messy and difficult, but uh, could become interesting and accessible if one spent sufficient time thinking about them. Uh, I came out my, of my obsession, uh, which is inculcated by our education system for formal theory and jargon, and which we see in so many of our young students even today. Uh, so SH introduced me to a collection of articles that I think arose from some sort of workshop held at Jadavpur University. It was a very nice collection of uh, like uh, simple problems which you can think about and uh, uh, work uh, like write a project on. And one partic uh, particular article that I remember was on the problem of understanding tides. Uh, so for uh, so that was uh, for the first time that I spent time thinking of a simple physical phenomena. Uh, which was so difficult to understand quantitatively, right? I mean, so it's a simple phenomena which you can observe very easily, but understanding it quantitatively is really very, very difficult. So I had a large number of discussions with him on this topic and read a lot about the history of the problem. Uh, for this purpose, I even got a membership at the National Library in Calcutta. Uh, I mean, I already, uh, because of SSG, I used to, I was a member of the, the British Council Library and the American Center, and I, uh, he really made me, uh, start reading books and uh, understand the history of various problems. Okay, so um, so SSG had the ability to highlight clearly highlight the serious flaws in our education system that lead to the lack of uh, critical thinking, uh, questioning of authority, and the separation of classroom knowledge from our real life experiences. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, just to give an example, a few years back, I was invited to a science exhibition by students at a school in Bangalore. And uh, one of the exhibits was on the constellations of uh, on the constellations of the northern sky, and the students had a number of very impressive posters, including uh, beautiful night sky photographs and so on. Uh, however, on talking with the students, I realized that the students had absolutely no idea that many of these constellations could actually be seen uh, in Bangalore in our sky. Okay, so. They had no idea that what they were the photographs they were uh, sh showing is actually something that you can you see every day in the sky. Okay, so this can disconnect between what we are taught in the classroom from real world phenomena was something SSG was uh, worried about all the time. Uh, SSG was fond of Feynman's uh, "Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman," and I think this book conveys uh, the above point and several other aspects of SSG's outlook on scientific uh, culture. Uh, SSC emphasized on critical thinking and the importance of worrying about the tiniest details. Uh, thinking critically, uh, in fact, led me to work on my first paper uh, uh, during my undergraduate days. Uh, so this is a paper on non-uniqueness in the solutions of Newton's equation of motion. Uh, so I wrote this while at presidency, and this was published in the American Journal of Physics. And uh, this work again arose uh, from an example that SSG mentioned uh, where uh, one finds that Newton's equation of motion of a particle in a potential, it's just a very simple one-dimensional potential. There, uh, so it had multiple solutions for the same initial conditions on uh, of position and velocity. Okay. So it was very surprising, but then uh, what I could work out is the that there are conditions for the uniqueness, and uh, this is what I uh, uh, was able to solve. So with SSG's guidance, uh, I was able to understand the reason behind this and obtain the necessary conditions for uniqueness. Uh, in my college years, I would always wait for an opportunity to speak to SSG. Uh, sometimes this meant long waits outside his office while he and AKR would be having all sorts of interesting conversations and, on science and philosophy and sometimes politics, and I would happily eavesdrop on this. Okay, So I would actually just sit outside their office and hear to all sorts of very interesting conversation. 
uh, at presidency, I ended up spending more time on what I thought was the real way of doing physics and less in preparing for the exams, uh, which by then seemed to me a pointless exercise. Uh, I ended up performing very badly in my final BSc exams. And for a while, I was uh, worried actually that my career in physics had ended. Uh, uh, during this time, SSG provided uh, me uh, to me great support and encouragement. Uh, and uh, for this, I am really, uh, really ever grateful to him. Uh, I eventually managed to get a seat for MSc in Rajavajar Science College. And after that, things uh, sort of uh, evolved smoothly. Uh, I went to TIFR uh, and I completed my PhD in 1998. I uh, kept visiting SSG whenever I visited uh, Kolkata, uh, later in uh, quite often in his uh, home in Kullani, uh, where uh, he would uh, feed, um, feed me a lot of uh, and, uh, very nice food. Uh, someone mentioned Luchi, and uh, yes, yeah, so I also had that uh, opportunity. Uh, and uh, meeting him was something that I always uh, eagerly looked uh, forward to. Uh, forward to. Uh, so I conclude by saying that in my opinion, SSG was a really unique and rare individual and uh, uh, perhaps the ideal example of a great teacher and a great uh, scientist. Uh, I end with a summary of what I think are the most uh, uh, important things I learned from my association with him. Uh, uh, like what you need to be successful in uh, doing physics or in general science. So, I mean, hard work and struggle are absolutely essential and one should worry about the smallest details and uh, we should not lose contact, uh, the connect between formal theory and our real life experiences and one should not get carried away by jargon and fashion. Uh, finally, uh, I learned that science is really self-rewarding. Uh, we do it because it is uh, fun. Uh, so, I, uh, I thank again uh, Suchetana and others for organizing this event. Thanks. Thank you very much. So with this, we end our reminiscences and we thank. So that we can also hear. Thank you very much. And we thank all the speakers in online as well as offline modes for sharing their experience with SMG. And particularly thanks to Professor Deepankar Hom for giving a very one uh, interesting, insightful overview of the area where SSG heralded work in our country. Now, before we end, uh, I should mention that not only in research, but also in teaching, not only in research and teaching, but also in terms of social commitment, SSG had a clear niche in, within himself. Of course, many of us know that he was an active participant in the Feed Freedom Movement, but even in later years, he probably had this uh, feeling for the cause of the country or the society <clears throat> enshrined in his mind in a unique manner. And in order to fulfill at least some of the commitments, he set up a trust in the name of his mother that was called Charu Prabhadevi Memorial Trust. Now, about these activities, uh, one of his relatives, Dr. Vishwaji Rai, is with us, and I request him to say at least a few things just about the activities of this trust set up by SSG. I do the only connect from Nova Janai, Utago, Shamor Shamande, Tashoto Warshe, Atosundor actor, Unustar, Ujapun Korajune, Amra is she Unar Utapok Shamor Shengupto, Unar Oshan, the Honor Paul, Misho Shatashi Shade, Charu Proadavish Kashon Shodname, Eighty, Trust at a Gotun Kore, Gotun Koren, Janmo Lud the গ্রামাঞ্চলে ছাত্রছাত্রীদের মধ্যে শিক্ষার ব্যাপারে বিশেষ করে বিজ্ঞান শিক্ষার ব্যাপারে আগ্রহ সৃষ্টি করা এই সংস্থার উদ্দেশ্য যে এবং ছেলে মেয়েদের মধ্যে বিজ্ঞান মানসিকতা গড়ে তোলা এই কাজে 1987 সাল থেকে জারপ্রদেবী শিক্ষা সংসদ কাজ করছে এবং 
আজও আমরা আমাদের সীমিত ক্ষমতার মধ্যে গ্রামাঞ্চলে কাজ করার চেষ্টা করে যাচ্ছি উনি আমাদের নানাভাবে বিভিন্ন জিনিস শিখিয়েছেন কিভাবে কাজগুলো করতে হয় প্রথম দিকে আমাদের কাজের এরিয়াটা ছিল মেদিনীপুরের পশ্চিম মেদিনীপুর তখন তো মেদিনীপুর একটাই জেলা ছিল গ্রামে একদম প্রত্যন্ত গ্রামে স্কুলের ছেলে মেয়েদের মধ্যে গিয়ে প্রোগ্রাম করা হতো প্রথম দিকে একেবারে শুরুর দিকে আমরা শুধুমাত্র পাঠ্যপুস্তক দেওয়া বই খাতা দেওয়া বা খুব মেধাবী যারা দরিদ্র ছাত্রছাত্রী তাদের কিছু বৃত্তি দেওয়া এই ধরনের কাজ কম্ম হতো তারপরে আস্তে আস্তে কাজের আমাদের সদস্য সংখ্যাও আস্তে আস্তে বাড়তে থাকে এবং আমাদের কাজের নেচারও বাড়তে থাকে উনি এগুলো দেওয়ার পাশাপাশি আহ উনি আমাদের আস্তে আস্তে শেখাতে লাগলেন যে কিভাবে পড়াশোনাকে আরো আকর্ষণীয় করে তোলা যায় ছেলে মেয়েদের জন্য মানে মাধ্যমিক স্তর অব্দি যে বিজ্ঞানটা আছে সেটা একেবারে স্কুলে বা বাড়িতেই কেউ ইচ্ছে করে কিভাবে করতে পারে এবং তার মধ্যে দিয়ে বিজ্ঞানের প্রতি একটা আকর্ষণ গড়ে উঠতে পারে এইটাই ওনার শেখানোর মূল উদ্দেশ্য ছিল এই প্রথম দিকে আমরা কিছু করি কিছু উনি পোস্টার সিরিজ রঙিন পোস্টার সিরিজ উনি আমাদের তৈরি করান তার মধ্যে একটা হচ্ছে প্রথম যেটা আমরা করি সেটা খুবই ভালো একটা পোস্টার সিরিজ সেটা পরবর্তীকালে বিজ্ঞান কিভাবে কাজ করে বই হিসাবেও প্রকাশিত হয়েছে সেটা হচ্ছে যে সৌর জগৎ সম্বন্ধে মানুষের যে সবারই আকর্ষণ সেই যে সৌর জগৎ সম্বন্ধে মানুষের যে জ্ঞান সেটা ধীরে 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 কিভাবে আহ কোপার্নিকাস কে প্লানের সময় প্রাচীন কালেরও উল্লেখ আছে সেখানে তারপর থেকে আস্তে আস্তে ডেভেলপ করে আজকের দিনে যে নিউটন পর্যন্ত যে ধারণা গুলো কিভাবে এগোলো এবং সেই ঘটনার বিবরণের মধ্যে দিয়ে আধুনিক বিজ্ঞানের কি কি বৈশিষ্ট্য কিভাবে বেরিয়ে আসছে সেই জায়গাগুলোকে হাইলাইট করে একটা রঙিন পোস্টার সিরিজ বানানো হয় উনিশশো বিরানব্বই তিরানব্বই এরকম সাল এবং এগুলো আমরা প্রচুর বিভিন্ন স্কুলে দেখিয়েছি এবং ছেলে মেয়েরা খুব আগ্রহের সঙ্গে দেখেছে এছাড়া পাশাপাশি বিজ্ঞান বিষয় ভিত্তিক নানা রকমের আলোচনা আমরা সভা উনি আমাদের দিয়ে করাতেন বিজ্ঞান বিষয়ে আগ্রহ সৃষ্টির জন্য উনি বলছেন আলোচনাটা আমাদের এমন ভাবে করতে হবে মানে কোনো কিছু একটা বলে যাওয়া নয় কোনো বিষয়ে যেটা যেটা নিয়ে আলোচনা হবে সেটার একটা একটা মানে কিছু তার সম্বন্ধে একটু হিন দেওয়া দিয়ে ছেলে মেয়েদের মধ্যে থেকে তাদের মধ্যে থেকে কিরকম রিয়াকশন আসছে কোনো সমাধান তাদের সাজেস্ট করতে বলা বা তারা যদি না পারে আংশিক সমাধান বলে দিয়ে তাদের থেকে বলা যে এটা কি ঠিক বললাম বা এইভাবে অর্থাৎ ডায়ালগ এর মধ্যে দিয়ে তাদের সাথে আলোচনাটাকে কন্ডাক্ট করা এইভাবে আমি উনি শিখিয়েছিলেন আমাদের এই বিভিন্ন বিষয় নিয়ে আমরা আলোচনা করেছি আধুনিক বিজ্ঞানের বৈশিষ্ট্য এবং বিজ্ঞানের জিন তত্ত্ব না মানুষ কিভাবে ইভলিউশনের মধ্যে দিয়ে বড় হলো মানে আস্তে আস্তে আজকের দিনের মানুষ হয়েছে এছাড়া হাতে কলমে বিজ্ঞানে অনেক মডেল বানানো ছেলে মেয়েদের শেখানো এবং তার ব্যবহারিক উপযোগিতা করা দেখা এবং হাতে কলমে বিজ্ঞানের এক্সপেরিমেন্ট করা এই এক্সপেরিমেন্ট অংশটা খুব সবচেয়ে বেশি ইন্টারেস্টিং ওদের সাথে হয়ে উঠেছে যে কত সহজে কত পাঠ্য বইয়ের এক্সপেরিমেন্ট আমরা হাতে কলমে করতে পারি সেটা উনি আমাদের শিখিয়েছেন এবং উনি প্রথম অবস্থায় মানে মৃত্যু পর্যন্তই তার চলে যাওয়ার আগে অব্দিও তিনি সক্রিয় ভাবে কাছে যুক্ত থেকেছেন এবং গ্রামে গেছেন আমাদের সাথে কাজ করেছেন কিভাবে কাজ করতে হয় তিনি দেখিয়েছেন বিভিন্ন বিষয় নিয়ে খুব আগ্রহ সাথে উনি আমাদের শিখিয়েছিলেন সেই ওনার শেখানোর সেই কাজের ধারা গুলো আজও আমরা করে চলেছি এবং সেটাকে ধরে রাখতে চেষ্টা করছি তা এইটুকুই ব্যাস আর সবাইকে অনেক অনেক ধন্যবাদ জানিয়ে আমাদের সংস্থার পক্ষ থেকে আমার বক্তব্য শেষ করছি অনেক ধন্যবাদ বিশ্বদীপ বাবু সো ইন দিস নোট উই ক্লোজ টুডে মিটিং অ্যান্ড আই হোপ এস এস জি এজ এ teacher as a physicist and as a human being has partly penetrated into the minds of even those who 